So this is a walkthrough of the Backbone, a JavaScript framework to uh, create JavaScript-rich applications that uh, adhere to an MVC design pattern in the front end. So a special shout out to Archer Adib, who let me use his example that I found here, which was the simplest example I found to date. So I built on top of this example for my app, which allows you to create, retrieve, update, and delete. All I will demo was the JavaScript on the front end. There is a Ruby on Rails back end that I won't go through for time's sake. So a quick overview of the app is it will have registration, sign on. You'll be able to add these little items, update the actual items, all this connecting to a database, all this happening in real time, and delete. So I will start from scratch with my database and take you through this once more, but carefully pointing to the code. So starting with the HTML, you can see that the sign on is this panel here. So this div is the sign on and the add item belongs to this view here, item list view. When you click on the add item, it will insert these other views, item view, inside the item list view. So starting from the top, we create two backbone views that attach themselves to those divs you see below. So the first one we create is the user panel view, which is this user panel view extending the backbone view. You specify which div tag in this case that I wanted to use, but it could be anything else. You provide the events that you wish to listen to, listen to and those events and the object gets initialized automatically when you do a new. So let's start with the registration, which is called as a result of the clicking the register button. T Daniel, register. What happened because the register button is given an ID here. An event of clicking the register button goes through the register action. What happens here? New user model is created and saved. So at a high level, what that does is this new user model, which is defined here as a backbone model, excuse me, back here, is just given a URL. And once that URL is given, it knows how to post, put, update, and delete to that resource. So the save receives two parameters. One is the JSON, and the other are the events to listen to on the callback. So clicking the register button had posted to the users with this JSON. And the response was 200 OK, which was success. Updated the UI. If it were to be not OK in the case of doing this, it would update the UI accordingly. One other thing we'll see as well is that if you try and add any items without logging in, it won't allow you to do that. And I'll show you how that works later. So let's sign on, which was the sign on action. Taking the username and uh, password. Looking up users, first we create a collection of users, which was defined in here in the model. And we fetch waiting for success or an error. On a success, we put, we provide the application with user ID and password and do some UI updates. On a failure, we just update the UI accordingly. So a little bit more detail here is not required because it would take too much time. So let's skip right forward to the item list view. So the item list view is already created in this HTML. So when I did this item list view is equal to new item list view, this object was created and attached to the item list view. So we'll add a few items. Go to the intro. This item list view is was originally just a button, and these item views got stuffed in there by clicking the add button. So let's walk through that. Item list view listens to item item button add item button. Clicking on that button clicks triggers this event. So a new item is created 
with parts with uh, two variables, part one, and I think there was a part two. So the item has defaults, hello world, part one is a variable, part two is a variable with hello and world in the as variable values. In the item list view, we instantiate one and set the values to hello world two, incrementing the counter to two. The, the list view has a collection of models and the collection of models are these items that I'm instantiating. These models are inserted into item views. The item views are given a model. So simply this list, item list view, has multiple item view view objects. So these are all my view objects and those view objects have a model associated with them, which is an item. So the item list view has multiple uh, models and it also has the views. When saving the item that you created, it automatically posts to that URL, that JSON. This example here was before when we weren't uh, logged in. It was unauthorized as a response. Uh, so it responded back that way because um, the authentication token that we passed was not valid. In this case here, it was valid when we did a post to this URL. We passed in a basic auth token that was correct with this JSON to that resource, which is the items, which created a new item in the database. So not looking at the Ruby on Rails code, we'll assume that all that those services work properly, which they do. So you can see that here. And that was the add button which is the add item view. If you click on the swap or delete, we're now looking at this. So he, those item views were actually created and appended to the item list view with that one line here. And this item view, it calls the render method to construct the HTML that's appended into the item list view. So if we look right at the render method, in the item view, it creates a new span using a clone of a template. And it associates the value using the class item name and takes the model's full name and puts it into that class. So it's just basic jQuery here. Creates the HTML and returns it back. So this render method is all, auto, all we'll see how later it's automatically called to update the UI by listening to the model, a change event. But for now, the list added a new item and appended it into the list. So the item view, which also is another backbone view, listens to swap and delete, which are right here. The methods are right here, swap and remove. So in case I went over that too quickly, the swap click of the swap HTML element calls the swap action, delete the remove action. So swap creates a little snippet of JSON of JavaScript, uh, sorry, JavaScript object that is defines part one as the model that is associated with this view, part two, and part two with the model that's associated with this view to part one. It sets it, saves it. Not exactly a safe move, but in this case it's okay not to check to see if it was successful or not as a re response. And on its saving, by clicking swap, the database is updated because a put is placed against this resource with this JSON, all automatic. So none of that stuff we had to code in JavaScript. So all the stuff that you're seeing that I'm breezing through was done automatically for me. Okay, the swap did that here to prove that actually happened in the database. We can look at the items and you can see that occurred here as well. And the delete, if we want to, we'll delete that as well. Which calls a remove action. Doesn't do anything except for delete. Um, as you notice, the UI is updated automatically. How that happens is in the initialize method, which is called automatically when you instantiate a new view, it says for this model, bind any change event to this method. For this model, any remove event to this, to this method. 
So in the case of uh, any of the content changing, it re-renders the HTML for that line item. So in a swap, it will do that. For a delete, it will also remove it, which is just JavaScript jQuery code here. So that's basically it. That was a high level, very high level overview of Backbone, an in-depth view of how this is implemented with the basic authorization token and a few other extras will be in the second video.